I'm going to try a new format for running through all of the books that have arrived each month. And if I hate it, then we'll just do it all at once. There are 25 books that came in in April. I guess I'll just start with like the book boxes. So I finally got my March Fairy Loot Adult box, which is a feather box book, which is A Feather So Black by Lyra Celine. This was super delayed, so it finally arrived in April, like well into <laughs> April. Fathom Folk, which is the Illumicrate YA, I think for March, got here like the second, so it was like, you know, pretty standard on time for, for them. This is like the prettiest edition. They always do such good editions, and the, the hard cut, the naked hardcover is really pretty as well. So I'm a fan. I might have to do like a summer vlog that's like water-based <laughs> fantasy or like sea slash ocean-based fantasy. I also got the April Fairy Loot YA Darker by Four by June C.L. Tan. I haven't really heard much about this book, but it sounded pretty entertaining, so I'm excited. I got the Illumicrate April pick, which is To Gaze Upon Wicked Gods. I have heard mixed things about this, so that's unfortunate. It is a really pretty edition, but I'm hoping that I will like it and that it's not as problematic as other people are saying, but... The people that are saying it have said it very convincingly, so we'll see. Those are the four that I've gotten. I've skipped April, May, and June of Broken Binding, and I skipped the adult April box from Fairy Loot. So yeah, these are, I think I'm set on those. I think the next thing we'll talk about are some of the additional books that I got from subscription boxes that are outside the regular subscription. So I got, they're still in the plastic, which is why they're so shiny, but I got Master of Crows and um, Entreat Me by Grace Draven from, that's annoying, I gotta take these out. They're from the Arcane box, which I think is part of the Mystic box. But these are, these were part of their subscription, but they had, extras and put them up for sale. Hopefully that crank thing wasn't too obnoxious. Um, but yeah, there we go. That's better. So it's got like a lot of foiling and then like foiled roses on the edges. Oh, and then like the internal formatting is really pretty too. She is one of my favorite authors. I think Entreat Me is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. And then the other one is uh, something else. <laughs> I think these might be like laser cut into the, and then foiled. But these are naked harp X for both of them. This one is Master of Crows. Again, with the gilded foiling. And then this is what the interior formatting looks like on this one. I haven't read either of these. So I'm very excited to get to them. The next two I got from Broken Binding. I got Play of Shadows and Crucible of Chaos. I think, yeah, this is like a prequel novel to the Court of Shadows. This is book one, which is Play of Shadows. These are both by Sebastian de Castell, author of The Great Coats. I do think there is some crossover between these and The Great Coats. So I was like, but I liked the description of this one enough to get both. And this one sounded good too. Just this one sounded funny too. But there's a, a solid edge and then this like stenciled edge. And it goes all the way around. I don't know if I need to read the great coats first. I don't know that I would be upset by that because it seems like something I would like. Oh, and then this also has like foiling and then 
one and papers. This one has very boring end papers. But also nice boiling. I have another book by him, The Malevolent Seven. I don't know if it's tied in, but I might just have to do like a try an author type thing. Next book I got is Tales of the Celestial Kingdom. This is the Fairy Loot edition. It goes with Daughter of the Moon Goddess and Heart of the Sun Warrior. Again, very beautiful art on the end papers and like foiling. It is very small. <laughs> it's smaller than I thought it was going to be, but that's okay. And then very pretty art in the back as well. I have read Daughter of the Moon Goddess. I've not read the sequel. Um, so I think what I need to do is read just the whole set of books when I get around to it. And then I got a while back, probably I think back in December, I got Of Blood and Fire, which is a broken binding book. It has the, the foil, the whatever, plastic on it. It's a Ryan Caho book. It's got dragons and th and like the description sounded really good and I was like okay I don't like totally go for dragon books anymore but um this one sounded very interesting and not like just dragons but also like other politics and stuff oh that must be like the I got like a slightly damaged copy and it's like I don't know like there's like a scratch like on the foiling like up there which is barely an issue they also came out with, like, they're doing the novellas as well, which is, like, this little guy. And this one has silver gilded edges. When they came out with the novella, they also they also came out with slipcases for of Blood and Fire. It has, like, this super long quote on here. And then, like, this is the front. Hello, my noodle. And this is the back. Hi, what do you think? So this is what it looks like with the book in it. But I ordered, I ordered this slipcase at the same time as the fall and the slipcase for that one, which is this. And then there's definite dragons on this one. So I have not started the series. I need to soon. <laughs> so I know whether to keep spending my money on this or not. And that's kind of what they look like all in there. And then this way. And I think what they're going to do for the rest of the series, because I think it's like novel, novella, novel, novella. Are you getting it? Let's see what this creature's up to. <laughs> oh, do you have a crinkly ball? Yeah? Yeah. Does dad need to come throw your crinkly ball for you? <laughs> what? <laughs> What a goof. All right. I ordered seven books off of Pango. Only five of them have arrived. And they are volumes 34, 36, 43, 44, and 45 of Haikyuu. I still have a few, like, in-between volumes to get, but 45 is the last volume of the manga, and it's it's pretty thick. It looks like this is risky, like compared to the, this is 45, and so like compared to 44, it's a little, it's a little bit thicker. Not like crazy thick, but yeah, I'm not, I don't know that I'm like ready to let this go, but the movie comes out at the end of May, so I might have to like push through and read the rest of this series. I've been doing it kind of piecemeal. I guess I could just wait 
and see. So I got those. I used Pango Bucks for these, so I did not spend any money out of pocket. Damien has been holding these hostage from the last time we went to the youth bookstore. And they are Blackwater Sister and The Hero in the Crown. This one is a replacement for the one that I have because this is my copy. Like, she's very melted and separated and like, like, <laughs> I don't know if you can see that, but like, just like entirely apart. Like, I, the problem, what, what, what happened, what I did, what I did was I read this out on the beach one year, many, many years ago, and the glue melted because it was so freaking hot because it was July. I've just had this on my shelf. Yeah, now I finally have a replacement. This will not be going outside ever because <laughs> I don't want the glue to melt again. I don't know. It's like, this is like my copy. They're the same exact copy, so it seems goofy. But I don't know what to do with this. Like, I feel bad throwing it away, but it also, like, would not make it past any sort of, like, quality control for any other other thing. These are also, like, pseudo-gifted. <laughs> I think he technically paid for them when we went. But he's been, he's been hoarding them on his side of the room, Instead of putting them with, like, my stack of books. So, like, clearly he hadn't, like, given them to me yet. So the next four books that I did go out and buy are volume 32 of Haikyuu. A Man and His Cat, volume 2. Look at him. They're just precious. Spy Family, volume 11. Because that just came out. And then Sakamoto Days, Volume 11, because this also just came out. I, when we were in Barnes & Noble, I totally forgot to look for Demons of the Shadow Realm 4 and Marriage Talks in Volume 2. But I was like, well, this is a cute little stack, so we'll just go with this. It'll be fine. My birthday is in May, and I did get gifted a Barnes & Noble gift card, so we'll be going back. These are all the physical books that I got in April. And like I said, if we get to the end of this and of like the series or like the second quarter of things, and I don't like how I had to or like doing it this way, where I do it like by month and then combine them all and then do stats and unhaul and other stuff, I'll do it a different way next time. I'm full of shit because I was going to say. Now I can put them on my shelf instead of leaving them on a table for the next two months, two and a half months, because July is insane for me. Now I get to put them on my shelf, but let me let me just show you the shelf in question because I am a lie I'm a lying hoe. Because look at this. Look at this. Look at this double stacked shelf. Like there's no room on here. There's absolutely no room on here. I do have a fat stack of manga up there that I need to read. And then I also have a fat stack of like desert fantasy that I need to unearth from it's in like the back stack on the middle shelf, which would then make room for most of these. The quickest thing would be to read a lot of the manga. There is also some, I think I read most of the romance, but there's also some romance on there. And there's some shorter books that I could like plow through pretty quickly. The goal was to be able to put these on that shelf <laughs> instead of having them sitting on a table. Oh, I think I'm missing one because my sister and brother-in-law bought a house down here and she brought me this you look better as a ghost and it's <laughs> it sounds really entertaining it sounds like really dark the blurb like the this top part says I have a gift I see people as ghosts before they die of course it helps that I'm the one killing them and I was like great sold she said it was like very 
full of dark humor, and I'm like, great, perfect, love it. So, that is 23. I don't know if that's borrowed or gifted. I think, I don't know if, she doesn't always want them back. I think my mom will like it. I will pass it on to her. But anyway, the goal was to get these on there instead of having them sitting out and like cluttering up horizontal surface area. Y'all, what's this baby boy got to say? Oh my gosh. I'm probably full of shit thinking I'm going to get any of these books on that show. I do have another bookcase in my bedroom that I could put these on. We'll just be Delulu for now and leave it at that. Next month I will have more and then we'll do the unhaul and some stats once I compile everything together. And by I, I mean he, because he does all the tech stuff. This is going to be a clip of all the books that I got in May. I'll start with the one book box book that I got. I got The Temptation of Magic by Megan Scott. I don't know that I love the red, but the end papers are like wonderful. Um, there is a reverse dust jacket and it does feel like it would go in a library and then like, I mean, you know, like she has a great view. Like, look at them. This sounds like what I'm gonna really enjoy. So I am looking forward to it. Basically someone who has magic and a magic user hunter. I don't know, that, I hope that made sense. And then I'm gonna go into the two books that I got from Broken Binding. Oh, this one, this is the Fairy Loot YA. I impulse bought these two books. One is The Mortal Techniques by Rob J. Hayes. It's called Never Die. And then these are the end papers. I think there's a creepy child. And I don't really go for creepy children, um, but this one sounded good. It's like martial artsy and it's got gilded edges, ribbon bookmark. I haven't read from this author and I have not read from this world before. And then the other one, is called The Silver Blood Promise by James Logan. This one got me because of the art. Like, these are the edges. This is the, the hard case. Let me, hang on, let me, let me do this properly. So this is the, the cover. Like, just stunning art. This is the hard case. And like, it's just beautiful. And then this is one of the end papers, end pages. And then this is the other. Oops. The art is stunning. And it is like a combo of Lies of Locke Lamora and something else. So I didn't like Lies of Locke Lamora. I thought Locke was dumb. Um, but like the synopsis of that and then the art got me. So hopefully I will like it. It is a debut novel. And then I ordered a couple off of Pango. Most of them arrived in April, so I got Haiku Volume 33. I took a trip to Kino Kunia as like a pre-birthday trip, not thinking I was going to get over there any other time this month, because my birthday is in May. So I got Haiku Volume 35, 37, and 42. I got Marriage Toxin Volume 2. Demons of the Shadow Realm, Volume 4, and then A Man and His Cat, Volume 3. My mom has decided that we are going as a family to Prague for Christmas, so I was gifted a guidebook for my birthday. And then 
Damien got me Towers Fall, which is the third book in the Towers trilogy by Karina Sumner Smith. I have the first two already. I've only read the first book, and it was several years ago, but I really enjoyed it. It's kind of like a dystopian y, it's not really dystopian, but like sci fi, and there's ghosts, and the main character can like tether ghosts to herself like while she helps them figure out what happened to them like how they died and like help them like cross over I finally got the third book of that and then I also I got my cousin gave me a Barnes and Noble gift card and then I also got some other birthday money from family so I went to oh and then Damien also got me Q volume 39 So he got me The Towers Fall in IQ 39. So I went to Barnes & Noble and I got IQ Volume 40. I got A Demon's Guide to Wooing a Witch, which is the second. It's the book after A Witch's Guide to Fake Dating a Demon by Sarah Hawley. I enjoyed that one. I think I will enjoy this one. And then I got the fourth book, fourth and final book in the League of Extraordinary Women series. This one is The Gentleman's Gambit. And then I got Laura Olympus volume six. And then they had, it was like, since it was May, you got like, maybe it was because it was my birthday or something. I got one of their like May picks for half price. So I got How to Murder Your Employer for half price. And then we did end up going back to Kinokuniya, but I only got four volumes this time. I got Witch Hat Atelier, volume 12, A Man and His Cat, volume 4, Haikyuu, volume 38. I'd ordered this one on Pango, but they never sent it, so they canceled my order. And then I got the Heaven Official's Blessing comic version in Chinese. So, like, I can't read it, but I can follow along with the pictures because I have read the novels. So, at least I hope so. When it comes with a bookmark. I didn't realize that. That's cute. I don't know if I will continue getting these, mostly because I can't read Chinese. Oh, there's stickers in here, too. Oh my gosh, that's a sticker sheet and a bookmark. Okay, well, maybe I am more tempted now. (laughs) But yeah, those are all of the books that have arrived in May. I am still waiting on my Fairy Loot Adult and my Illumicrate box, but I don't think they've shipped yet so yeah oh my gosh look at that look at this little perfect baby and then there's another perfect baby he's just a Cecil man I hope he's in the okay I'm gonna just go through the list of books that I have picked up in June. Sakamoto Days number 12. I got Haikyuu volume 41. The Darkness Within Us. I think this was the May YA? No. No, this was the June YA. I haven't read anything by Trisha Levenseller, but I've heard it's a good time. I had pre-ordered Emily Wilde's Map of the Otherlands in like January, February, and that arrived this month. I also got, this is, I think the Illumicrate June pick. This is of Jade and Dragons. It actually sounds really good, so I'm really excited to, like sometimes you get them and you're kind of like, okay, like that could be a good time, but like that one sounds like it's kind of like exactly what I want. I got... Night of the Living Cat, Volumes 2, and 
and three. I just like the Cat Max Furry Road. Damien picked up A Story of Seven Lives, another cat manga. We're going to have quite a cat manga collection already, but, you know, soon. This looks really cute. So this is like, this is like kind of a joint book because he picked it up and I was like, oh, that sounds good. And then I got volumes five and six of A Man and His Cat, which I've already read. But then I got volumes nine, 10, and 11. Nine, 10, and 11. Um, they did not have volumes seven and eight, so I am at a pause with this series for now. My copies of The Girl in the Tower and The Winter of the Witch, the Illuminate editions, arrived. And let me just show you. The end papers are super pretty. And... The books are just really, really beautiful. This is the cover of this one, and then the back of this one. And then this is the front of Girl in the Tower, and this is the back. These are the end papers in the hard case. Like, look at this. Look at this super pretty and then the edges so these finally arrived i think i ordered these actually it didn't take very long for these to arrive and then i got the honey witch this was the fairy loot adult pick i've heard mixed things but we're still hopeful i think the the main review that i heard like the reviewer that had mixed things to say is not necessarily someone that I like totally match up with like taste wise. So it, I'm like, oh, okay. That's fine. And then I also got Ruthless Vows, which is the sequel to Divine Rivals. This is the fairy loot edition and still gorgeous. Look at this hardcover. Like, look at, look at those sparkles. I still have not read Divine Rivals. Super behind on that. I read A River Enchanted and I never finished the duology and it's been so long that I need to reread that one. So what I'm thinking of doing is doing like a double, like complete a series, like author, whatever. I'm, I, I have a name in my head and it's not coming out of my mouth. Double feature. Yeah, there we go. I know that they are like vastly different, but yeah. This arrived the like the last day of May. This is Crocodile on the Sandbanks. Crocodile on the Sandbank, excuse me, by Elizabeth Peter Peters. It's the first book in the Amelia Peabody series. And I have been told, or like I've heard that it is like the mummy in flavor. So I've been wanting to pick it up since I heard that because obviously The Mummy is a masterpiece. So I wanted to pick this up and finally bit the bullet and ordered it from Pango. I was finding all of the other books in the series at my local used bookstore, but never the first one. So I was like, okay, fine. We'll just, we'll go ahead and order it because it's $3, probably maybe two. And I was like, all right, we're gonna, we're gonna get this. I did start reading it. And then I was like, no, 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 stop it. <laughs> you have, you're reading like four other books right now. So I put it down. I, I did only get like 10 pages into it. So I didn't get very far. In June, we went to watch the Lord of the Rings extended editions in theaters because they released them. I think they, Initially, they were only going to do one weekend, but I think it ended up being two different weekends. I went to see them in theaters when they came out, but they were, you know, just the theatrical versions. I kind of wonder if they were, 
like the director's extended editions because we have the extended editions here at the house. There were like little moments where I was like, was that in, was that there? Was that there normally? We went to Barnes and Noble one day before because we had like an hour to kill or something. And we were like, well, might as well just head over and kind of browse. And I ended up not getting anything, but Damien picked up Dreadful by Caitlin Rosakis. He really enjoyed it. He read this in like three, four days and he was like, you're really going to like it. So it's not like officially in my, well, it's like kind of in my list now, but I don't know. I don't know how to count it. <laughs> and then he, he really likes Peter Beagle. This is just the dust jacket because he has the book. It's, uh, I'm afraid you've got dragons. I actually picked this up and showed it to him and he was like, oh yeah, I want it. And I was like, okay, well, I'm glad you want it because if you didn't want it, I was going to buy it. So this is also kind of a joint one, but like he paid for it. So like, I don't know why I didn't put it in here. We also picked up something in the Tolkien universe. I can't remember if it was like Unfinished Tales or something. It wasn't like a Lord of the Rings copy, but it was something like we also got that one. And I think he I think he ended up getting a couple more, maybe another manga or another something. That's it for a haul. I have a really kind of pitiful stack of unhauls right here. I do think Damien has put a couple more into the bag that we have yet to take from the last like unhaul I did because we haven't been to the bookstore yet. The four that I have are The Hero and the Crown by Robin McKinley. And the only reason I'm getting rid of this book is for, for, for that. This, these, this is the back of the book. <laughs> like this, I took this to the beach many, many years ago and read out on the beach and the glue melted and it has never been the same, <laughs> but I was gifted a new copy for my birthday. So I don't, I don't know what to do with this. Like uh, this is obviously not sellable. I also feel like really, because it's like none of the pages are missing. You just, they're, they just need to be glued back in. Might just recycle it. I wish I had a friend who was like into like scrapbooking or something and needed like text or like boojoing or, you know, whatever. Maybe I'll ask my sister. She used to bullet journal. I don't know that she has time. I got a new copy, so it's already been replaced. The next book that is getting unhauled is Haroon and the Sea of Stories. This is Damien's book that I read. And it's cute. It's fine. I don't actually know that I would ever read it again. And that was the case with Damien. So he was like, yeah, I'm going to just add it to the pile. The next one is... Practice Makes Perfect. This is a Sarah Adams novel. I thought this was really cute. It is closed door. It is fade to black, which I'm like, if I want a romance, like, I don't want closed door. So, like, sorry. <laughs> there are very few closed doors that I read, that I pick up, especially if I know ahead of time. I read another one of her books, Cheat Sheet the football ballerina one. So I read the cheat sheet and like was like surprised that it was fade to black. And so I kind of knew that like that might be the case for this one. I liked this, but there were a couple like issues with like side characters where I was like, why are you treating the main character? That why is this the relationship dynamic? So I didn't love that. Those two things in combination just made me really disinclined to like pick this up again. Pretty much since, like, I realized, like, after this one that I was, like, I just don't like Fade to Black very much. Like, especially in, like, an adult romance, that's not what I want. If it's, a, if it's YA, absolutely, like, that makes sense. 
I don't know how old these characters are, but they're at least in their 20s. Like, she owns a flower shop, so she's got to be not 20. Got to be older than that. I think this was the book that made me really realize that I don't really like closed door, fade to black kind of contemporary adult romance novels. And I think the only two that I've picked up have been on KU. So like, I haven't gone out and purchased them. So yeah, so that's why this is going. The final one is the Illumicrate edition of One for My Enemy by Olivia Blake. It's very pretty. Like, yeah. Uh, let's see. This is the one where it's like a Romeo and Juliet retelling. It's a set of sisters and their mother who are witches and a set of brothers and their father. I can't remember if they're called warlocks or not, but basically like Russian crime families dealing in magical things. I liked the way that this was like a twisted Romeo and Juliet retelling, but ultimately I think everyone in Romeo and Juliet and any sort of retelling is just dumb. And that's a me thing. And I like, I actually really liked this, but then all the characters still made me really mad. So I'm like, I don't think I need to keep this. I don't know. Uh, like, I, I don't know that it's like super high praise to say that of all of the Romeo and Juliet retellings that I've like stories and retellings that I've read or been exposed to. This is my favorite, but I still hate all of them. <laughs> like I still hate the premise of all of them because everyone's just foolish, but this is like the least offensive. That probably says a lot about me, but Damien also read this one. And he was like, yeah, it's fine. And I was like, all right, well, we'll just put this up on Pango and see, see how we do. The stats for this quarter are like really wonky because I decided to try and film this like month by month, partly so I could get like piles of books put away a little bit. When I was putting stats together, I was kind of regretting that because like they weren't all together. So I couldn't like see everything and just be able to like, you know, like arrange them into stacks. I was like, okay, like I'll, I'll, you know, put something together. Like I, I had put like a, like numbers into like a spreadsheet for the first quarter of ins and outs and was able to like do all this stuff. And I deleted that spreadsheet because it was in a, the wrong spot and I don't know what I, I don't know. I couldn't find it. So, and then I was looking at my video from, last time and I was like I don't this was complicated and I don't <laughs> I don't have that energy today so we're just gonna go with the really shitty little tally marks the things that I calculated this time so in April 23 physical books come in in May I had 21 no 22 and in June I had 17 physical books come in for a total of 63 I got eight from fairy loot five from illumicrate five from broken binding one of them is borrowed from my sister six were gifted for my birthday in May I got eight from pango 18 from Barnes and Noble, nine from Kino Kunia, and two from, I think, Arcane Society, which I think is part of the Mystic Box. Of these, eight were books from subscription boxes, 38 were either sequels or companion novels of like series that I'm already working on. There were 13 that were like, miscellaneous like 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 this one and this one and like I got a book on Prague because we're going for Christmas there were 13 that were random picks so like 
something like this one and and this one were you know that we just got while we were out and about or ones that we'd been looking at for a long time four were collected books so books that I had wanted to get a, either a specific physical edition so like a special edition or like an edition period so obviously eight of them were subscriptions and then I think all five of the Broken Binding books were, like, special editions that I bought. Like, a couple of them were, like, impulse purchases. Well, I think all of them were, like, impulse purchases. But And then, obviously, I borrowed one, so I didn't pay for that one. I was gifted six of them. I have credit with Pango, so those eight I didn't pay for. I used credit. And then of... The 18 from Barnes & Noble, I got a gift card for my sister and for my cousin for my birthday. I was like, I don't know why I put in the, like, the tally for them. Like, the majority of those were, like, paid for with a gift card. And then I used some, like, birthday cash money as well to, like, pay for the remainder, basically. I don't think I had any sort of, like, credit for Kinokuniya. And then, obviously, I paid for the arcane box. I have been trying to be a little more mindful about, like, if I don't think one of the book box books sounds good to me, like, skipping it. I skipped Evocation in April from Fairy Loot. That was the adult box. I skipped April, May, June of Broken Binding, the next series for them is the Greenbone Saga. I've heard people love, and then I heard, you know, it's such a big series that I'm like, okay, people are going to dislike it. So I'm assuming that if I like it, I'm really going to like it based on the people that I know that I have similar taste with that have liked it. So we'll see. The mock-ups of it are very pretty that they have posted online, and... Yeah, it'll be good to finally read those. I did have some impulse purchases come in. I'm like, okay, I ordered this back in like January or February. And I'm like, all right, I already spent the money. It's already here. If I hate it, I'm going to put it on Panko and that's fine. I do think based on like numbers of like even just books that came in overall, like even from like KU, like I only read one KU book, which I'm not talking about digital books in this video anyway, but like overall there are just less coming in and that's what I want. Like that's going to make this even remotely sustainable. Unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to get to like nearly 30 books in July because somehow we're here because I have a family trip and a work trip back to back that take up the last like three weeks of the month. I suspect I will have more audio next month read anyway. So financially spending less money and also pre-ordering less. Part of that is like I haven't been interested in very many of the fairy loot and illuminate picks. Like I think I ordered like four books last month and they were like sequel pre-orders and like I have a list I think there's another like three or four this month but I'm like yeah I don't know I just there haven't been very many picks that I've been interested in first off but then second of all I've been really good about not buying books like if there's a series that Illumicrate or Fairy Loot are doing and it's not one that I've read like even though it's something that I might be interested in I haven't picked it up because I haven't read it and like that would that's kind of been my rules like if you haven't read it don't buy it and there have been a couple one-offs like it sounds like a like a cute like standalone and like some of the comp titles are similar like like here's here's a preview I, I pre-ordered I pre-ordered letters to a letter to the luminous deep from fairy loot and like 
it's it's stunning. Obviously, it's not one that I've read because it just came out, but you know, it sounded like something I would be interested in. So I was like, okay, like I'll make an exception for that. And then there's been a couple from Broken Binding where I'm like, okay, like that sounds really interesting, and I've heard really good things about this author. So I and like I'm trying to be really really careful with how often I do that. And it's been really, really low the last couple months. And like, I think June was the best month of all, both in the number of total books that came in and how much I spent overall. So I think we're, we're getting there. I think I'm going to have a lot of pre-orders come in in July. My Emily Wilde and Ruthless Vows were pre-orders from like January or March. Yeah, I had two pre-orders that arrived in July already, but I have five more that I'm supposed to get in July. They're like a June or July release, which obviously now it's July, and I think a couple might end up being August because they were like Kickstarter ones, so I don't know. Yeah, we are slowly getting the number down of books that are coming in. I do think like having fewer books that I pre-ordered will make it so there are fewer that arrive later in the year. Unfortunately, I think a lot of the books that I pre-ordered earlier this year and like end of last year even are going to arrive around now. So I think July is going to be kind of heavy. There's a couple that I know will arrive in August. Oh, I think the last thing that I wanted to mention was that Obviously, I've been tracking the number of incoming books that I've read. And I think I'm going to have to do these percentages different next year. Anyway, so I have had 164 total books come in, including digital, like so audio and ebook as well. And that, that total, I think there's almost 40 books. Because, like, physical books is 126. So, so like, the, the math is, like, I'm vaguely mathing. I don't think it's the right uh, information that is mathing. But, anyway, <laughs> that's not the point. The point is that I have read 59% of the 2024 books that have come in. Which does include, also does include the KU books and the Libro FM books, but it does not include the collected books because those are pretty much solely books that I've already read and want a specific copy of. Like, I'm not counting those towards, like, I've read this in 2024. I'm feeling pretty good about that. A lot of that was all of my haiku that I have since finished. Anyway, I hope everyone has been making progress on their reading goals and spending goals and all of that sort of thing combined. I'll see y'all in the next one for the next quarter.